Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. How are you, dear students? I hope you are fine and well. I once again welcome you in Pakistan International School Thais Virtual Learning Class for the session 2020, and this is class second year for subject biology. Dear students, today we will see the last topic of our previous chapter which we have studied uh, before uh, almost uh, all is completed just one topic is left that is the chapter number 17 nervous coordination and we will see here diagnostic test for nervous system because in the previous topic we have seen as uh, disorders of nervous system as well as effects of drugs on the nervous system uh, and for treating um, those uh, nervous disorders, we need to diagnose the basic problem, the basic uh, uh, disorder, basic cause, uh, which uh, like uh, is the reason for that uh, nervous disorder. So uh, we will uh, see today what are some uh, different diagnostic tests uh, which are available in this technological uh, era. Uh, for the nervous disorders. So, um, and then we will start inshallah our chapter number 18, that is chemical coordination. Actually, that is, uh, we can say the part of uh, coordination uh, in a uh, human body and we have seen nervous coordination and then we will see chemical coordination, a detailed, a chapter on uh, chemicals, those are called hormones. So in that we will see the topic, chemical nature of hormones as well as mode of action of hormones, how they act in our body. So let's get started. Yes, we will see first a diagnostic test for nervous disorders like we have seen uh, before in the previous topic, uh, some of the nervous uh, disorders and those are, if we see uh, from the start, some are structural, some are infectious, some are functional disorders, uh, vascular disorders as well of CNS. So in that we have seen stroke, meningitis, tumor and functional disorder headache. Then uh, we have seen some um, uh, degenerative disorders as well, which are not replaceable or retreatable. Those are called asthma's disease. So today we will see how can we diagnose these type of problems. So there are certain um, tests required to diagnose nervous disorders in that we will see EEG today, then we will see CT scan, and then we will see MRI. So first we'll talk about EEG. Dear students, maybe you have heard the name ECG, isn't it? ECG electrocardiogram. Card means that test is for diagnostic test is for heart problems. So here we will see electroencephalography, electroencephalography, that is EEG, and that is um, uh, like uh, refer to the diagnostic test to the brain, like encephalon is uh, the other name of a brain. So in that, in electron encephalography or EEG, we know that we can uh, test the, um, the function of the brain according to their or on the basis of their electric charges which are distributed in the neurons. So you can see here in the diagrams, uh, in that uh, we use uh, some electrodes which are uh, just linked with this cap like structures which are placed or pasted um, 
uh, with the skin or uh, this scalp because the scalp or that is called uh, like uh, very near to cerebral cortex and they continuously it continuously generates electrical activity continuously every time so they can be recorded with the help of electrodes which are attached the hair so first of all the measurement of head is taken where to place these electrodes and then precise locations on the scales are uh, going to be uh, what we can say uh, pointed out and then uh, there we place electrodes and then these electrodes are connected with this machine you can see in this diagram and this is connected with this computer so on the computer all the electro a cardiogram is appeared and then we can see whole of the situation these way these are the waves actually which represents the situation in the uh, which is uh, which are going on in the brain so these are called brain waves so that is eeg pattern like ecg pattern which is uh, going to be held for uh, the cardiac problems then we will see computed tomography scan in uh, tomo, uh, tomography computed tomographic scan that is also called ct and then scan ct scan in that uh, we use x ray procedure but uh, that is not a simple x ray which we take for the uh, for the bone fractures or in uh, for our um, uh, skeletal disorders but that x-ray procedure is done where we combine lots of x-ray uh, uh, images uh, by the help of lots of x-rays all together at one time so that can be done for five to ten minutes and what happened in that we take the x-ray images which uh, with the aid of a computer to generate a cross-sectional of views so we can say uh, see here three-dimensional images of the internal organs especially uh, our uh, bony structure but for the soft tissues as well as well as internal organs actually the patient is here uh, we can see here in this diagram look this one here the patient is placed in a machine that is called a ct scan and a ct scan a machine or that is called uh, the rotatory machine actually this moves all around and here the rotating x-ray source is there on which the x-rays in more amount that uh, is uh, thrown on the patient's required area where we want to take the images or uh, we want to diagnose the problem so that moves in the form of a fan like it uh, just increases the area of um, diagnosis here at the position so that platform is inserted on which the patient is lying into the machine and then uh, there is a rotatory x-ray source over there and this moves all around and uh, then we can have lots of images on uh, the computer screen you can see here the next one is magnetic resonance imaging that is also called mri that is um, like pro, uh, very uh, much important as well as um, beneficial technique which we use for uh, for detecting any type of uh, brain disorders as well as nervous disorders as well as any type of body problem so that is actually radiology technique but here we don't use uh, radiations but we do here uh, we use magnetism a large magnet you can see here is placed all around 
and here is radio frequency coil is there by which radio waves generate and uh, a computer is attached uh, like with every machine to get the images of the body structures so mri is actually a scanner that is a tube in which the patient is just move inside and um, inserted into the magnet so um, the patient is uh, exposed to strong magnetic field and that magnetic field attracts the water molecules which are present in the in human's body more than 60 to 70 percent we are having water in our body so water is having uh, oxygen one oxygen and hydrogen so more than oxygen our body is having hydrogen so this hydrogen of water is having proton inside it so that proton is having the attraction towards this magnetic field and that arranges aligns at the place at its required place so when this uh, magnetic field is uh, going to generate so it takes the images of all the parts of or required parts it is taken and that images are taken onto the computer and uh, the image and resolution produced by MRI is quite detailed rather than a CT scan. Uh, what happened that we sometimes get uh, confused that uh, whether CT scan or MRI is having the same uh, like qualities and the uh, same structures as well as the uh, same result we get, but it is not quite right so what is the difference between these two uh, let's talk about them so here you can see Yes, what's the difference between the CT scan and MRI? We can see here, this is, a, uh, this is also called CAT scan. And this is the machine in which the patient is lying down. And uh, you can uh, see uh, that the patient is moving inward in the CT scan. Here is uh, the beam is uh, moving around, that is X-ray beam. Uh, where uh, the, it is pointing on and that is going like we slice up the bread a slice uh, with the knife that uses a radiations to take the images lots of x-ray radiations um, and that is uh, in the CT scan and we can have this uh, type of uh, sliced images in, in the CT scan that is almost in detail. But what uh, has happened in MRI that is magnetic resonance imaging. So that machine is totally different and um, images the water molecules which are present in the body as I have told you before the patient is moving inward into the uh, this machine MRI and coils are placed over the body uh, you are imaging like this is the coil and that is um, just placed near the body for where we have to uh, just uh, take the images and uh, then the person is moved inward and then that it takes lots of detailed images in the 3d so you can see the difference between mri and ct scan mri typically takes at least 30 minutes and ct scans typically take five minutes then ct scan is excellent for the organs or uh, the bones as well and MRI, there is no radiation is used and magnetic field and radio frequency is used here and that is best for the tissues, soft uh, tissues. So that is uh, 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 some uh, differences we have uh, discussed here.
Okay, dear students. Uh, Alhamdulillah, we have finished our chapter number seven of nervous coordination. Now we will gonna start a chapter number eighteen that is chemical coordination. So in that we will see role of hormones as chemical messengers and nature of these hormones, their paths and uh, their mode of actions as well as we will see different type of glands there uh, and the feedback mechanism of hormones uh, negative and positive feedback uh, mechanisms as well it means we will see about all um, about chemical coordination so chemical like nervous coordination our body is um, doing homeostasis every time. So homeostasis is done not only with the nervous system, but it uh, depends on the chemical coordination as well. So for chemical coordination, there is very, very important uh, chemical messengers are there. Those are called hormones and hormones act as chemical messengers which give messages to different cells to different organs of the body and do the hemostasis uh, of our body so hormones are produced by a certain glands and glands are the tissues that produce and release some products these are called secretions so glands are actually the tissues, cells, or organs that secrete uh, substances for use in the body or for eliminate the chemicals from the body as well. So it means uh, to do hemostasis in the body. So there are two types of glands. If you see here, there are two types of glands, the glands, exocrine glands and endocrine glands. Exo means outside and endo means inside. It means that these glands secrete out the hormones via a duct. Like a duct, a small tube is uh, with this gland. This is exocrine gland which produces uh, the hormones secrete the hormones and the hormones is taken out with the help of any type of duct so this is uh, 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 like uh, it just reaches to the targeted organ um, targeted organ or targeted cell but with the help of duct for example we are having tear glands we are having sweat glands and uh, they uh, like with these glands we are having duct also so uh, they remove the sweat out of the body with the help of ducts if we talk about endocrine glands endocrine glands are those glands which do not have ducts but they are made up of uh, some uh, tissues or just uh, epithelial cells and they don't have any type of ducts but they release their hormones directly into the blood that there is bloodstream and endocrine cells are there which um, inside the uh, blood are releasing the hormones and via this blood uh, the hormone or that is chemical messenger which is uh, uh, like reaching to its for example here the targeted organ so here we can have lots of endocrine glands like adrenal gland and um, thyroid gland lots of glands which we'll discuss in this chapter about all endocrine glands present in our body but some glands uh, acts or performs both of these roles they can act as exocrine gland when they uh, that is needed and uh, and the other function, they are uh, like functioning as endocrine glands when that is needed. So it's very good example is pancreas. 
pancreas. So pancreas acts as endocrine as well as exocrine gland. In endocrine gland, it releases insulin. For exocrine gland, it releases pancreatic juice via duct into intestine. Okay. So endocrine glands or ductless, those are called ductless glands as well. They release hormones, which are chemical messengers. So now I'll talk about chemical messengers. They are required in very low concentration in the blood and they triggers uh, that like uh, function or they can lessen the function as well. And they are small soluble organic molecules. They are termed as messengers because they uh, reach to the specific receptors uh, to the targeted organ. They are received by specific messengers. Okay, so uh, let's talk about chemical nature of hormones. Like hormones are organic substances but they are having different structural role. So they are, some hormones are steroids, some are proteinous, proteinous, and some are catecholamine, amino acid derivatives are there, and peptide hormones are there. Steroid hormones, they are derived from cholesterol, if you uh, just remember chapter number two of uh, first year so you understand what is cholesterol actually they are uh, steroids so steroids are derived from cholesterol cholesterol is a person, uh, precursor of lots of uh, steroid hormones so that is uh, these steroid hormones are secreted by adrenal cortex Mm, that is like present above uh, the kidney testis the male reproductive organs ovary and placenta the female reproductive organs and these are all steroids and the hormones which are produced by them cortisone aldosterone testosterone estrogen and progesterone actually location is given as well as the types of hormones which are steroid in nature so proteinous hormones they are a somatotrophic hormones they are almost a three to 200 amino acids which form these proteinous hormones and they are somatotrophic thyrotrophic and gonadotrophic hormones and they are secreted by anterior lobe of pituitary gland what is pituitary gland that is called um uh, the master gland of our body which releases lots of lots of hormones in the body as well as insulin hormone which is secreted by pancreas uh, catechol amine this hormone that is having two very very important hormones which can um, uh, functions in uh, sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system that is adrenaline and noradrenaline that is derived from the adrenal medulla which is uh, um, from adrenal gland which is above the kidney amino acid derivatives amino acid derivatives they're derived from amino acids only and thyroxine is very very important hormone which is released by a thyroid uh, gland what is its function and role in our body and uh, we will see this in the next uh, topic inshallah peptide hormones peptide hormones are uh, released um, they are actually released by uh, the hypothalamus as well and that is uh, there are lots of hormones which are included in that they are like uh, 
melanocyte stimulating hormone which uh, stimulates melanocytes in our body then oxytocin and vasopressin that is uh, released from the pituitary gland and actually from the hypothalamus then uh, they are just uh, stored in pituitary gland we will discuss about them and adrenocorticotropic hormones as well as calcitonin and parathormone okay if we talk about this um, mode of uh, hormonal action so mode of hormonal action uh, that they are of two types first protein hormones are there uh, how they uh, move into uh, the body as well as steroid hormones like if you see uh, these chemical nature so both uh, proteins and steroids hormones are there so proteins and peptide hormones actually they are water soluble that's why they cannot move directly into the cell this is cell so for binding this one peptide or pe uh, protein hormones to bind this one there is a receptor these are also proteins but they are specific with the specific hormones so they are having active sites like which bind with them and they just move them inside the um, inside the cell so because they are water soluble so they cannot move directly into this because this lipid bilayer that is hydrophobic in nature so that is um, <clears throat> that needs a receptor and this receptor uh, this receptor actually triggers and other um, um, chemical that is called second messenger. So this peptide hormone or the hormone which is outside of the body that is called first messenger. And then this first messenger triggers out or binds um, with their receptors on the plasma membrane here and starting a series of events to generate a second messenger. The second messenger is having a great importance because without that, the cascade or the chain reaction cannot be occurred. So that is mostly CAMP, that is called CAMP as well, or cyclic AMP, adenosine monophosphate, that acts as a second messenger and that is used for intracellular signal transduction. Like it is present inside the cell and it moves, transfers the signals from receptors to uh, the required or target, uh, targeted organelle or targeted place or targeted chemical. So transferring into the cells effects of hormone, it transferred this effect of hormone with the help of second messenger, like it can be Jack or helper, which transfers these messages from one place to another, like glucagon and adrenaline, which cannot pass uh, through plasma membrane. So then this um, second messenger then triggers various changes in the cell and it do the activation of enzyme or gene activation or it can go inside the nucleus where it is attaches or with the dna and gene activation is done and then it moves uh, make messenger rna and then uh, transcription and translation will be done like uh, making of another hormone. The steroid hormones, they are uh, steroid and thyroid hormones, the hormones which are released from thyroid hormones, they all are steroid in nature. So because they are lipid soluble, fat soluble, so they can pass through the plasma membrane easily. But for cascade reactions, for passing its uh, um, have hormonal action to the target it also needs some receptors but which uh, they are present inside the cell so they are present inside the cell steroid hormone can enter easily through plasma membrane and 
um, where the steroid receptor is present. So they bind with the steroid receptor. So they form hormone receptor complex, which enters into the nucleus. And this complex then binds with the chromatin or DNA and activation of DNA is done. And then there is transcription of messenger RNA and this messenger RNA will move again for outside of the nucleus to uh, make different types of proteins which are required uh, as the body requirement. So uh, in this target cells activities are modified by the altered gene expression which is done uh, here uh, in the nucleus by uh, the attaching of this um, complex with the chromatin material and activation of messenger RNA is done or is progressed. Dear students, um, that's it for today. I hope you all understood uh, this very clearly. What is the mode of action? Tomorrow, inshallah, we will see detailed account of endocrine system of man, of human body. Uh, so till then, Allah Hafiz.